This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Connor James. Today is Sunday, June 9th. Let's check in with meteorologist Kelly McShane for a look at your forecast this morning. And Kelly, it looks like another soggy one out there. Yes, unfortunately, we cannot catch a break from the rain. It's been raining for quite some time, and today is no exception. Check out satellite and radar right now. Get you started for the morning. Cumberland Valley region, you are dry right now. However, towards the north into the Big Sandy region, that's where we're seeing the bulk of the rainfall this morning. Just some light to moderate showers as you walk out the door. We do have that flash flood watch continuing for today, ending tonight at midnight. So just something to keep in mind we're going to have more showers and thunderstorms possibly creating some local flooding issues visibility though not too bad this morning just a little bit of patchy dense fog in hazard and jackson but overall not too bad in the visibility department for your travel forecast we're going to see some fog this morning just in those valley regions and a couple of showers so be careful on the roadways and be careful this afternoon maybe a peak of sunshine or two but we will see showers and thunderstorms return and i will break down that full forecast in just a little bit, Connor. All right, thanks, Kelly. Well, roads closed, people are without power, and buildings are damaged from flooding in Campbell County, Tennessee. Dispatch says early Saturday morning, more than 2,000 people were without power. Law enforcement in Campbell County says they have received reports of multiple sinkholes with more rain expected to fall there this weekend. Emergency management is keeping a close eye on the situation. And that flooding there causing damage to a church. This is the Faithway Assembly of God in Lefty. Follette. Pastor Steve Bruce says he was devastated when he saw the photos. He was out of town when the rain hit. Church members checked out the damage yesterday, and although they can't use their building, the congregation still plans on having a Sunday service today. And more than 200 people in Martin County braved the rainy weather yesterday morning for a countywide cleanup after the efforts shaping our Appalachian region, also known as SOAR, made a big announcement. WYMT's Marianne Fletcher has those details. Cleaning up the county. This just makes you feel good to get out and do something. Katrina Sansom is one of more than 200 people who picked up trash near roads in Martin County Saturday morning. About how many trash bags do you think you guys have filled up today? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Picking up more than 200 bags of trash. I think it's good for everybody to come together. And that's what it's all about. The local Kiwanis Club here that reached out to us and said, hey, we'd like to get some people together. Jared Arnett with Shaping Our Appalachian Region, also known as SOAR, says forming a group called Martin County in Action is a step in the right direction. We've been able to raise enough money to really start formalizing a group here over the next six months. Announcing a $10,000 donation from multiple sponsors to help get it started. So we're really excited just to celebrate and talk about the future of Martin County. Regardless of the problems. There are plenty of communities that have great water that don't flourish. Melissa Phelps with the Kiwanis Club says they are looking forward to starting the new organization. It's exciting to see it all come together and we hope everyone is willing to get on board. Coming together to prove Martin County matters. There's a lot of opportunity here and we want everyone to know about Martin County and to come visit us. In Martin County, Marion Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. For more information on how to join Martin County in action, visit our website, WYMT.com. And the Remote Area Medical Clinic, also known as RAM, set up shop in Hazard for this weekend. It is the second year for the event being in Perry County. At 6 yesterday morning, they opened the doors to help provide hundreds of people with medical, vision, and dental services at zero cost and no questions asked. The RAM program, it's good for the community, you know, the people that get served, the community when they come together to put on one of these clinics has to come together and raise money and work together, so it's a benefit for them. And then it's a good benefit for the uh, students too, because they get an experience, they learn to give as well as get. If you would like to stop by, the RAM clinic is back open right now and will last until about 2 this afternoon. And hundreds of athletes hit the track for the third annual Trinity Gay Memorial Classic Saturday morning. The event honors Lexington track star Trinity Gay. Gay was killed in 2016 when a fight broke out in the cookout restaurant parking lot. These athletes are hoping for one thing, to make it to nationals. But that's not a cheap trip. That's part of the reason the Lexington Blazing Cats Track Club created the Trinity Gay Memorial Classic. They also are honoring Gay's memory. 
This is hard. This is extremely hard because I'm used to seeing my child out here running. So this is hard to just watch everybody else's kids. Trinity's mom says this year was not as packed as years past because of the rain, but turnout was still strong. And on Friday, Clay County deputies arrested a man for setting fire to his own home. Deputies say Timothy Stewart started arguing with firefighters who came to put out the blaze at his home on the Bells Fork Road. They realized Stewart was intoxicated. He was arrested and charged. He was arrested and deputies charged Stewart with arson and wanton endangerment, among other charges. And over in Laurel County, deputies arrested a woman on Friday morning when she refused to leave a business off East Laurel Road. Ginger Shell threw a baggie on the ground and would not listen to deputies. While being arrested, she pushed and kicked a deputy. Shell was charged with public intoxication, possession of meth, and resisting arrest. And in Ohio, a woman accused of killing her newborn baby 26 years ago was booked into jail. Gail Eastwood Ritchie is charged with one count of aggravated murder and one count of murdering, uh, murder of killing her newborn son. The crime happened years ago. The baby's tiny body discovered on a back road wrapped in a tra trash bag. And yesterday marked the end of an era for the LG&E as they demolished the remainder of a coal-fired generating station in South Jefferson County. The plant initially closed in June of 2015. After a 61-year run, officials say the plant served as a reliable cornerstone in the Louisville community for decades. The demolition took months of preparation, which included finding a contractor, monitoring weather conditions, and obtaining necessary permits for that type of work. And President Trump is praising his deal with Mexico that promises a crackdown on illegal immigration. The president now suspending his plan to impose tariffs on Mexican goods. There were growing fears those tariffs could raise prices for American consumers. Weijia Zhang is at the White House. President Trump is back at the White House after spending the week in Europe. This morning, he tweeted everyone very excited about the new deal with Mexico, a deal he first announced on Twitter last night, adding the tariffs scheduled to be implemented by the U.S. on Monday against Mexico are hereby indefinitely suspended. The 5% fee would have driven up the cost on all Mexican imports, from cars to electronics to fruits and vegetables. To avoid the tariffs, Mexico has agreed to beef up measures to reduce the number of Central American migrants crossing into the U.S. Both countries recognized the vital importance of rapidly resolving the humanitarian emergency and security situation. Mexico will deploy its National Guard throughout the country, focusing on its southern border, where 6,000 troops will be placed, according to Mr. Trump. Officials will also crack down on criminal smugglers and expand the Remain in Mexico policy. Migrants seeking asylum in the U.S. will wait in Mexico while their cases are resolved. The president also tweeted Mexico has agreed to immediately begin buying large quantities of agricultural product from our great patriot farmers. Initially, the White House insisted the threat of tariffs was in response to an immigration issue, not trade. The president is a brilliant negotiator and he came out on top this time. Republican Senator Joni Ernst said farmers in her state of Iowa will benefit from the deal. Mexico is the number one purchaser of Iowa's exported corn. So we do see this as a great step forward and we are breathing a sigh of relief that we will not see these tariffs. Many congressional Republicans are relieved. They had urged President Trump to abandon the tariffs for weeks, concerned they could cripple the economy or jeopardize a new trade agreement with Canada and Mexico to replace NAFTA. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, the White House. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, not your average sight in Pittsburgh, we'll show you an unusual animal sighting there. Well, the flash flood watch continues today as even more rain is expected to finish out the weekend. Your, your, your full forecast is coming up next.